thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, we are with Andre, who is here. Thank you, Andre, for joining us to share your knowledge on extending open source libraries on the example of selenide and selenium. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, I hope we can start. Yeah, my name is Andre. I'm from Estonia, Tallinn. And yes, I love uh, developing open source project, maintaining open source project. I love uh, creating automated tests. I'm working in a company called Born, where we do use actively extreme programming, meaning that we, as developers, we create post production code and automated test for it, both unit tests and uh, like UI tests. And because of that, I at some moment I created a library for writing uh, like effective, concise UI tests uh, in Java. This library is called Selenite. It's based on Selenium, and that's why I uh, have been investigating a lot of different issues and like technical troubles how to overwrite some behavior on Selenium, uh, how to custom customize some aspects of Selenium, and so on. And I wanted also to make my own library, Selenite, also like customizable and expendable. Uh, that's why I'm interested in this topic. And I hope you can see my slides. That's why my topic today is uh, extending open source libraries on the example of Selenite and Selenium. But actually, it's also applicable for many other libraries like JUnit, TestNG, Makito, and so on and so on. So today, agenda is like this. First of all, I will tell what is the problem that we are trying to solve in some real like code examples. Then I am going to show how this pro the problem of extendability is solved in Selenite in, in Selenium. And uh, some final thoughts in the end, some, some way. So let's start from a problem. Let's assume like imagine that you as a developer like created some tool which has some convenient api and users are used to it user can use it for example if you created selenium you have api like this so you are familiar with this like uh, obviously so you can create a driver you can call some methods on it like navigate click check elements something like that and uh, most of the time, it's everything fine with this uh, approach. Uh, I, uh, let me uh, run this code for you. <laughs> I like to show the code and like to run the code. So it, it like it gives feelings that, yeah, I'm not just reading theory, but I'm really like doing things and you are watching things. So this is a typical uh, Selenium test. When you create a driver, navigate somewhere, find some elements, blah, blah, blah familiar and the question is what if user wants to do something differently for example if user wants to find the elements not by name by by id for example most of the times it easily do, doable by api by parameters for example you can write by id and use some other id or you can write uh, whatever is instead of is displayed, you can write like is enabled, something like that, do whatever. So most of the time, customization can be done by uh, API or methods. Uh, but sometimes there are things that are much, much harder to uh, configure or overwrite. For example, you probably know that uh, for uh, communication between test and web driver, Selenium uses HTTP client, not native HTTP client nowadays. And for a long time, the HTTP timeout, timeout for this HTTP client was three hours, which uh, seems to me really unbelievable, uh, unbelievably slow or long. What, what if uh, something hangs between and tests uh, cannot connect to the driver and like uh, something hands between there in network protocol then your test will hang for three hours it's like unbelievable it's 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 not okay okay nowadays it's better uh, starting from selenium 4 it's now three minutes not three hours but in many cases i still think it's it's too long so the question is how can i change this timeout how can i put like 10 seconds, for example, it would be okay for me. 
uh, but no, it's not possible. How to change this timeout to some smaller timeout? There is no such configuration parameter. It's this three minutes is hard coded somewhere in Selenium. That's a question, how to make such things customizable? This is a question. We will see it later. Uh, another uh, uh, example, like for, familiar for me, is Selenite is, is a, uh, a library created on top of Selenium, which is specific, which is yeah, specifically needed for testing UI. Uh, its API looks like this. In some sense, it's similar. You open a browser, you find elements, you click it, or do some actions with elements. But it was this API was made like more sophisticated, more readable, exactly for tests. And again, yeah, let me show uh, the code. Uh, Selenite demo. Uh -huh. The code looks like this. Okay, we can run it uh, to see that it really works. Uh, it, yeah, again, it opens a browser, clicks some elements, checks some results, everything is fine. Uh, in this case, the test failed because I uh, put uh, especially a wrong number here just to show how the test uh, fails. In, in case of test failure, uh, Selenite tries to generate a very, very readable, like very concise error message, which is readable, which is like expressive. Let me show. It says that, uh, sorry, list size mismatched. You expected 100 elements, but in reality, you got 10 elements and the real collection uh, that was on the page was like this. At least all the elements that you, you actually could. So it also takes automatically screenshot, uh, saves page source and try down some other numbers as well. So for example, you can click the screenshot exactly right, right here and watch what, what happened, investigate why the test happened and failed. Uh, so that's why this library is very convenient for tests. But again, the question is how to customize its behavior. In most cases, it's, it's very uh, easy to customize by parameters. For example, if you want to find the element not by name, but by something else, again, you can write by ID, whatever, right? Or you, if you want to click differently, Selenite supports quite a lot of different ways to do things. For example, you can click not by standard way, but by using a tricky JavaScript which might click faster or more stably in case of like animations or moving elements. Uh, yeah, so you can give some parameters like please click using JavaScript code. Also, you can say something like uh, please click uh, not exactly in the center of the point, point but uh, like in some corner. So you can click with offset, something like that. And there are some other options as well, timeout and so on and so on. Uh, so in most cases, again, you can change behavior of the library by parameters, but not always. Uh, for example, again, in this case, we saw that uh, in case of test failure, Selenite takes a screenshot, but you see that by default, the screenshot covers only the visible area of the browser. But in many cases, you, what you really want to see is something out of the screen, something below the screen. There is some important things often, some disable buttons, some counters, whatever. Uh, so the question is, could we customize the behavior of Selenite so that it took the screenshot, uh, not, not only visible part, but the whole browser screen? How to do that? There is no such an option. There is no such a um, setting no, or parameter. How to customize a thing like this? Yeah, so this is uh, this is our primary question today. Uh, user users always want something special, some special features that are not just doable by parameters or configuration parameters. So how uh, the question essential question for me? If you have some library, some tool, how to make everything, every aspect of this library customizable? This is interesting for me. How to make everything customizable? And I had to investigate how to do it and. Uh, yeah, again, there are several levels. The most simpler levels are to allow users to do whatever by using API or settings. This is the simplest one. Another option is using dependency injection. This is a way of spraying and so on. And my option or Selenium option or Makita option is using some system of plugins or extensions. 
let's review them. Uh, making something available by API, by parameters is good in case of like common wishes, in case of some absolutely typical common wishes, features that users often need, often ask for. It's okay to do it by parameter. And for features that don't really need some external dependencies, for example, okay, we will see this with screenshot. Yeah. But sometimes it happens that it's uh, not sufficient to make just a parameter or just settings. And you really need to heavily customize the behavior, how to do that. Uh, yeah, dependency injection is next option, but it is only good if case, in case if your, if your framework or if your project uses dependency injection framework, like Spring or Druid and something like this, then it's okay to use dependency injection. But in many cases, you don't have dependency injection framework, like Selenium doesn't have dependency or uh, injection framework or Selenite or JUnit, uh, because they are full of static methods. They don't have a single entry point, like start JUnit, like start Spring application. Uh, so the question is how to customize behavior if your library doesn't use any dependency injection frameworks, what to do then? And uh, yeah, like all our favorite frameworks that we used in testing. And the answer is uh, service loader. This was a concept introduced actually quite a, a long time ago in Java 6. Service loader is another like version of dependency injection. In some set, it's, it's simpler. Uh, how to do it, how to use it. Well, uh, I'm talking about service loader because actually both Selenium and Selenite use service loader pattern and many libraries as well. Uh, how to do this? Uh, if you want to make something customizable in a library, for example, if your library has interface user repository, which might have different implementations, uh, how to make it like possible for users to overwrite user repository. Uh, in that place where in your project where you uh, need to get user repository, need to use user repository, you are going to use Java Util Service Loader. This is a class with static method load, which can return your, your user repository, some instance of user repository. This is like familiar to dependency injection. Uh, there might be several of them possible, so that you probably in most cases you can get just the first one. And uh, to say service loader, which would be your default implementation, you need to create a file uh, in the folder in class path in folder meta in services and the file uh, must be uh, named after your interface name this is a full name of your interface class user package 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 user repository and inside of this text file it should be a text file with just one line in, inside of this file you need to write the full name of class of the default implementation of user service so uh, again, user repository is interface, which has implementation default user repository in our library. And in user code, in uh, any other project that want, uh, wants to use this library and wants to customize user repository, overwrite user repository, what they need to do, they also need to create the same file, the same file with the same name in their code, in their class path, also with name user repository, but which should contain the implementation class of their customized user repository. That's it. So in this case, uh, in your like user project, uh, you will tell the library to use your user repository and not their default user repository. Uh, let's try to do it in code. Uh, uh -huh, okay, let's try to do it in code. Uh, for example, if we have a project where we have a uh, uh, login service uh, which wants to use user repository. User repository is an interface. And as you see, this class uh, right now is suitable for a typical dependency injection. It has a constructor which uh, accepts a user repository parameter. Uh, so it's it's okay to use this class in uh, like in Spring, for example. But what if uh, 
we want to use this class like in tests where we don't have any spring, any dependency injection. What if we would just want to create an instance of this? Or use, uh, like in case of uh, Makito, use some static method of this class. What if? So which server, uh, which user repository should we get? In this case, we can start uh, using server repository. Let's create another constructor. Okay. Uh, and we are going to find some implementation. So as we so we are going to find uh, to ask service loader to uh, give us user repository class. And again, user repository is just an interface. We don't know yet what what would be the implementation. Uh, otherwise, we need to call find first. Uh, and if there is no one, we probably could, for exception, or we could uh, uh, get, uh, for example, like it's up to to us to uh, as an author of the framework to decide which uh, implementation should be the default. So in this case, uh, probably we're seeing that the default is Postgres user repository, uh, and let's uh, print it out. That was a real story. So now we uh, can run this method. Yeah. By the moment, we're only interested in, in which repository will be really injected. In this case, we saw that it by default it injected the Postgres repository. And what if we want to uh, in in our project we want to override this? Uh, let's create. You know, uh, we have a typical folder as it said test resources. Uh, these files we are going to get into class, but uh, as you know, we created a folder called meta in slash services, and we can create uh, a file named after this interface, full package name and full class name here. And we are going to put some other uh, implementation here. Oh, we already have some dummy user repository suitable for test. Let's put the full name of this dummy user repository in this class. And in theory, when I run the same test again, now, yeah, now it should be injected dummy user repository. So uh, this is a way uh, that we uh, manage to uh, uh, or customize behavior of login service. We could inject, sorry for all this, we could inject into login service some other implementation of user repository by creating such a file in follow meta in services. And you, uh, why I am uh, showing it? Because uh, you can override uh, similarly many aspects of Selenium or Selenium or Makito on the unit. Uh, we don't have too much time, so let's uh, uh, quickly see how we can do the same thing in Selenium. Uh, how how it's uh, how customization of behavior is implemented in Selenium again using the same service loader. Inside of Selenium, we have a static inject method, which like a wrapper for service loader, and we have a lot of default implementations in meta inf default services. You can look there and find uh, many default implementations of different services. Uh, and when you uh, want to uh, implement some aspects of Selenite, for example, we want to take full size screenshots. Again, let's create a file called uh, Photographer. Why this name? Because Selenite has an interface, Photographer, which has a default implementation like WebDriver Photographer, which just takes a screenshot using WebDriver, a usual WebDriver API, like familiar for you. But what if we want to uh, take like full size screenshots? We just create another class called Full uh, Screenshot Photographer. And I have already an already implementation of, of it. Let me just unshell it to, to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, we can look at this class, and now we see that we have in our project, not in Selenite, it only in our project, we have another class which implements the same interface, Photographer, you see, uh, but which implements this method differently, totally differently. It uses Chrome developer tools, uh, CDP protocol for taking a full-size screenshot, 
sorry, no, you see an example of like huge customization of behavior of selenite. It takes takes screenshots totally differently, like using some really tricky method. And uh, remember, we have one failing selenite test. When we run it again, and this test will fail again, it must fail because we uh, put uh, the wrong expected number here. You remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, the test uh, failed as we expected. This was wrong number. And now look at the screenshot. Initially, we saw only a small screenshot. And what's now? I hope when we now click the screenshot, we will see a much, much longer screenshot. Yeah. Now you see a much bigger screenshot, with, which includes not only the visible area of the browser, but uh, yeah, the whole browser screen. Great success. So we managed to overwrite behavior of Selenite by creating some Selenite plugin or overriding some Selenite plugin. This is how it works. Uh, and just to mention that Selenite, at, at some moment, I had to create uh, like system of plugins or extensions for Selenite. And by the moment, we have three like official plugins uh, for Selenoid, for Appium, and for uh, clearing elements in a reactive framework. Uh, and actually, we have a lot of other ideas to create some new plugins, which are not implemented yet. Uh, full screenshot is almost done, <laughs> as you saw, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, as a brief uh, introduction, what it means, Selenite Selenoid plugin, what it, what it means. Uh, if you don't know yet, Selenoid is alternative to Selenium Grid. This is now, uh, so this is a tool for uh, running browsers inside of a Docker remotely. Uh, and nowadays, this is very, very popular instrument. Uh, uh, and the problem with this uh, instrument for me is uh, that many Selenite methods uh, that work like by default with Selenium don't uh, no, like stop working when uh, people run browser inside of a Docker. For example, like don't have the test doesn't have access to clipboard anymore, and that's why we had to extract clipboard service uh, like as a plugin and uh, uh, customize this plugin in Selenol, in Selenoid plugin, <laughs> you know, uh, and so on and so on. There are a lot of things that in, we had to customize in Selenite uh, in order to make it possible to work in inside of a, a Docker. For example, downloading files, which Selenites can can do in three ways, we had to rewrite it in Selenoid and do it like differently using Selenoid API and so on and so on. We have a lot of other uh, plugins like which customize Selenoid behavior for Selenoid. You can find this GitHub project here by link. And another existing uh, Selenoid plugin is uh, Appium plugin. Like uh, Appium, if you don't know yet, I believe you know, Appium is a framework for testing, uh, for writing tests for mobile applications. Appium uses Selenium interface, uh, Selenium protocol. Uh, that's why Selenite is also possible to use Selenite for mobile applications, for testing mobile applications. But we had to overwrite some things. Again, we had to customize behavior of the default Selenite object factory uh, or, and some few other things as well. For example, Selenite by default saves HTML of the current page when the test fails. But in case of Selenite, you know, this must be not HTML, but XML, you know. So that's why we had customized behavior of this page source extractor. And so on and so on. There is a lot of customization also done and possible. We, had to, we even had to customize click in Appium to make it more stable, faster, and so on and so on. So this was a short introduction. What are existing Selenite plugins? There are some few technical nuances. Uh, yeah, I must mention that every framework that uses standard Java service loader pattern actually does some customizations to it also. <laughs> it's like funny. <laughs> yeah, because service loader in Java is quite low level and it doesn't cover all the details and doesn't answer all the questions. For example, the question about default implementations. In Serenite, we solved it so that we created a separate folder called default services, where we have all the default implementations. 
you can look in this folder to like get the ideas what are all possible implement all possible services that, that you could implement or override and in selenite all the services are singletons uh, and selenite will always pick only one implementation of any service uh, compared to selenium which can pick like all possible implementations in many cases we will probably see it soon and now getting back how you can customize probably you want to hear it <laughs> how you might customize some aspects of selenium uh, for example as i show it uh, what if uh, we want to overwrite the native uh, client timeout which is three minutes right now, and we want to make it shorter. Let's try to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. No. Yeah, Selenium also uses uh, uh, service loader, but with some tricks, but with some nuances. So once again, now the Selenium, typical Selenium uh, script works. It's green, everything is fine. But what if we want to customize uh, the timeout? I found the way we need to overwrite uh, this class at back client factory. Let's create a file called HTTP client factory. Let's put a different uh, uh, class name here. Uh, and let's create this class. Okay, let's create the class of such a name native client factor it should extend as you know uh, as you know it should extend cli HTTP client factor oops I forgot what exactly should we extend sorry <laughs> uh, let me speak on this uh -huh. it should extend native client Mm -hmm. uh, now let's overwrite uh, some methods. In this case, we want to write the only method, create client. And uh, fortunately, it was, it was easier to overwrite the timeout by doing like this. We need to create uh, client another client config. Uh, and uh, by copying the existing config and calling method uh, read timeout. Duration of, yeah, let's put in real life, it's okay to put timeout, I guess, like 10 seconds, for example, or five seconds. But let's just for example, let's put really small timeout, like 11 milliseconds, for example, really, really small timeout. And let's use this method here. Uh, so I hope that uh, when we run the test again, we will get into this implementation instead the default yeah, uh, you see this is a default selenium implementation and we i hope we will get to our implementation and, and see a shorter time out i hope that my test should fail because this time out is too small the expected result to fail and as you see it doesn't work as previously it was not sufficient to just create a custom native client factory and just to create such a file it wasn't sufficient why uh, the problem is that selenium does it like with tricks if you look into the default selenium implementation this is a selenium class you see uh, an interesting annotation http client name yes uh, selenium tries to apply some logic it tries to find all possible client factories and filter like pick one of them if we call it like for example fast actually it's not fast but it's short time out but yeah okay, let's call it fast uh, so when we will name our factory like fast but it's not enough now we also need to say selenium please use the fast factory and i have uh, a way to do it uh, it's a system property which you need to set to make selenium use your factory Let's try. I hope now, yeah, now Selenium uh, has picked our factory and now our test will fail exactly because of two short timeouts. 
yeah, it says that, sorry, but I could not do it in 11 milliseconds. I could not open a browser. Uh, so now we can uh, just in case increase this number. And let's see if now everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it can open the browser. This way we saw how we could uh, implement a custom service or override a custom like uh, some, some class in Selenium. Uh, so a short summary of Selenium. Yeah, how uh, what we had to do, we not we had to set system properties saying Selenium, please use our factory. Yeah, uh, it's because inside of Selenium there is such a code. Selenium gets select uh, system property to get the name of factory. Then Selenium uh, tries to find out all possible implementations of this class HTTP client factory and to, to try uh, to find only one of them which has this annotation, which is the big client name. This is a custom Selenium annotation. And it tries to filter out one of them which has exactly this name that was in the system property. So it's not easy to find out how exactly could you overwrite this class. As you see, it's not like trivial and I guess it's not documented anywhere. I just found it by reading Selenium code and debugging. So uh, yeah, I mentioned that everyone, every library that uses uh, service loader somehow customizes it. And in case of Selenium, uh, Selenium uses uh, additional annotations like HTTP client name to filter out the needed implementation. And Selenium uses auto service annotation if I'm not mistaken, it's something, it's a notation from uh, some object like Google or Google Juice or something like that. Uh, using this annotation, I guess Selenium generates this meta in services files during the build, something like this, I'm not sure, whatever, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this, these are nuances of Selenium that you need to know if you are going to overwrite some classes or to provide custom and custom implementations of some classes. Yeah, mm -hmm. once again, this is the same. Uh, and one major issue with Selenium as, as to me, it's like, I would say even it's, it's a bug of Selenium that there are many classes in Selenium that are declared declare it as services. So you can find in meta in services, you can find uh, like default implementation of these classes. And it creates like uh, uh, impression that you could override them that you can, but you can cannot actually. Let me show one pull request. Uh, this is one change that was made at some moment in Selenium. As you see, uh, like, few years ago, Selenium, uh, when uh, Selenium needed to get an instance of uh, blah, 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 Firefox driver service builder, it used service loader to load driver service builder. And again, to feature of them, which would be suitable for Firefox driver, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and if you look into Selenium jars, you will see that many of Selenium jars actually do contain such classes. You know, again, meta in services and this class. And it yeah, creates like uh, uh, impressions that probably you, you might overwrite this class. You can create your custom implementation of this urge dri driver service builder. But in reality, you cannot. Because uh, as you see later, this code was changed so that it does not uh, use service loader anymore. But actually, it creates uh, uh, the need a class by just using new, new driver factory, new Firefox service, and whatever. Uh, all these classes are not injected anymore, so we cannot really customize them. Uh, no matter that they are here declared uh, as like customizable services. So uh, actually, in reality, there are not so many classes in Selenium that you really can override. Not so many. It was even a little bit hard for me to find a good example for this presentation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, okay, I showed how could you customize uh, behavior of Selenite in Selenium uh, using uh, information in meta in services uh, folder. Uh, 
And you can actually just do the same with many other open source libraries like JUnit, Makito, and so on and so on. Uh, so what might be a summary of this presentation? Uh, as a user, you can always look into any of jars that you are using and look into the folder metain meta services. As, as I show it in IntelliJ IDA, it's really uh, easy to look inside of these jars and look into metain services and get hint what things of this library could you customize? Probably, maybe, <laughs> if you're lucky. And many other jars also contains uh, this folder and also have possibility to, to write something, some classes, even especially Makita, like Makita. It has quite a lot of such uh, possibilities, but a little bit tricky one. Yeah, LiquiBase also. Yeah, many other uh, libraries allow doing that. LiquiBase, as you see, allows overriding pretty much any piece of LiquiBase. You can write really like anything and add your own implementations, customizations, and so on and so on. So it's now you know that you can look into emitting services and play with it and try to customize some parts. Probably it helps you to fix some bug or to investigate some production issue and so on and so on. Or just add logging to some parts. It's often might be possible, might be useful. Uh, and another summary is for uh, those of us who create some libraries, some reusable libraries or frameworks uh, for to, to authors or creators of or maintainers of uh, some projects, like reusable projects like Selenite or Selenium, uh, or just for any other developer, as a uh, like usual developer. Yeah, I think that it's always a good to think. Like everything is a potential plugin or everything is a potential service. It's probably a good idea to make every part of your project, every part of your library, like replaceable or injectable or customizable. It doesn't mean that you need to do it right now. <laughs> no, probably it would create too much over engineering. It's not needed always, but it's always a good idea to think in the terms of replaceable uh, parts and injectable parts. It probably creates, helps you to create a better design of your code, uh, which works well with TDD. You know, test-driven development also forces you to create like smaller classes, smaller methods, which are easily uh, testable, meaning that they are easy, easily replaceable by mock implementations. These things lead to a better code design, from my opinion. Thank you. I'm ready to answer any questions. Uh, if you wish, yeah, please raise, raise hands. That was wonderful. That was a wonderful practical session, uh, Henry. Just one moment. Uh, let me remind that it's not always, uh, you don't always need to do it in reality, because probably it's not really needed. Probably it will just cause of engineering of your code but if you really need as as me i had to investigate some system of like plugins in selenite because people often asked oh how can i like take screenshot differently how can i like change some timeouts and so on and so on so i had i had to do it especially for apium yeah uh, because in apium many things look like selenium but actually work really differently uh, and so you had, yeah, I had to customize pretty much things in Selenite. Yeah. Yep, that's true. I mean, having worked on both of them, I, I can correlate that that's a great work. Uh, any, any other questions from anyone else? And uh, probably it, it was a little bit too diff, too technical, I guess, probably. Not not everyone doesn't does really need to know such like technical nuances of libraries. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Andre, for your presentation. It it was it was a great one. Thank you for sharing your experience and and the nuances. How did you solve it? It was all great.